Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the second order uh, filters. And last lecture we talked about the first order filters. The reason we're having second order filters is because the higher order filter typically will get a signal cleaner, which means get rid of the uh, noise or unwanted frequencies um, with, with, with uh, much lower amplitude left. Okay. Uh, so today we're going to look at the second order uh, in basically in two topics. The first one is we're going to look at the first the general form of the second order system, which is the, the transfer function of the second order system, and uh, this is the basis for all the uh, for understanding all the uh, second order filters. If we get um, the first topic understood, the other type of filters are very easy to understand. So focus on the first one. And we're probably we're gonna have four video clips. So we're gonna have the uh, one video clip for the first topic, and then we're gonna look at the uh, low pass filter, and then we're gonna have third clips for the other three type of, uh, filters, and then we're gonna look at a uh, scope observation of the low pass filter we're gonna um, uh, have as an example. Okay, so let's get started on the uh, general form of second order system. So the second order system trans function, let's see, in this case, we are having uh, all zeros, right? So there's nothing on the numerator, on the denominator. The denominator basically is one. So in this case, we have um, Ts, that's the uh, S square over two zeta omega zero. The zeta is known as damping ratio. And we will see what effect this will have on the pole, on the roots of this trans function the damping ratio and the omega zero is called the natural resonant frequency and we're talking about the in a, in a in the next video clip we're going to look at the RLC circuit this um, this uh, damping ratio basically is saying is is represent how um, how the system is really how how lossy the system is, and if the, the res for the um, series connect the RLC, if the resistance is very high, I mean the uh, damping ratio is going to be high, so the system may be overly damped, and for the uh, um, natural resonant frequency, this will be will be determined by the uh, Capacitance and inductance we'll see uh, later. Uh, first, we will take a look at what's the roots of the TS. And let TS equal to zero. We can solve for the roots using a quadratic equation. So the two roots, um, the two roots are, I hope you still remember what the quadratic equation the roots are. So let's see if we use s sub one and a two root number one and two, that's gonna be equal half um, the coefficient in front of the, uh, the uh, square term, which is the one, right? Minus the coefficient in front of the, um, the uh, s, which is minus two zeta omega zero and a plus or minus square root of the, uh, Two zeta omega zero square minus four times minus four times omega zero uh, square, right? Let's uh, factor out this uh, four zero uh, four omega zero square from the roots, and we we're gonna get a two omega zero from the roots. So we're gonna write another step here. I'm trying to avoid skipping any steps to reduce the possibility of confusing you plus minus a two omega zero and what's left inside of this is going to be uh, zeta square minus one right so we cancel the two and let's factor out this um, factor out this omega zero so we're going to have uh, omega zero times minus zeta plus minus square root zeta square minus one so in this case if the, the 
if zeta is uh, greater than one, zeta greater than one, s one and two are two different uh, real roots, and we call the system. The system is is overly damped or over damped. If the uh, zeta is what I'm writing here is should be one. If zeta is equal to one, s one and two. Uh, if zeta equal to one, the square root would be equal to zero. So s one and a two will be equal to negative omega zero times zeta. So these are two identical real roots. Are two identical real roots or multiple poles in this case. Uh, real roots and the system is called critically damped the factor the damping ratio is very important for the second order system but that will determine the behavior of the frequency response especially at that omega equal to resonant frequency we will see very soon and if the uh, zeta is less than so if zeta is less than one the um, number inside the square root zeta square minus one going to be negative so we uh, will um, write a complex number there we have s1 2 equal to because square root negative 1 is equal to uh, j and we're gonna uh, have um, omega 0 times minus zeta plus minus j square root since we factor out this negative 1 from the uh, from the square root so we have 1 minus zeta square so now inside zeta Inside the square root, we have a positive number. So in this case, we have uh, two or two complex numbers. Two complex numbers in conjugate pair. And in this, this system is called the system is under damped. You will see under damp system you will see the oscillations and also you will see the body plots will have special behavior around that natural frequency range um, let's look at the system that is normalized to the natural frequency and uh, we're gonna have t1s uh, is equal to ts over omega zero square and in this one we get, uh, if you look at the original equation, and uh, the reason we have this, so we have one plus something, we can easily uh, do the approximations, plus two zeta omega zero, two zeta s over omega zero plus one. And if we plot the trans function of these, and uh, we, if we look at this, j omega we do the approximation and this approximately equal to one if omega is much less is much less than omega zero if these are very small and uh, then we're gonna have uh, the the term can be approximate by one and that means at a very low frequency at a higher frequency if Omega is much greater than omega zero, and we have s square over we have negative omega square over omega zero because negative j square because the uh, j omega square over omega zero square this term is gonna dominate and that's gonna be equal to negative 
omega square over omega zero square because j square is equal to negative one. And so we we can um, we can approximate with the two straight lines. At low frequency we have um, we have one, and at high frequency you have a zero. Uh, we have uh, um, um, we have omega square over omega zero. And in that case, the slope of this line is going to be instead of 20 dB per decade for the first case, for the first order system. Now we are having 40 dB per decade because of square root uh, square uh, of the omega term. Remember, if we take the uh, t j omega t uh, j omega, if we take the dB at high frequency, this be uh, log 20 base 10 of omega 0 square over omega uh, omega square over omega 0 square and this is going to be equal 40 times log uh, omega over omega 0 so, so this the slope will be uh, double that's the kind of advantage of the high order system and let's look at the body plus I have the um, I have the approximations and also plot it in the uh, in Google Colab and I have the plot for this function so this is the game plot here and we can see um, we can see the uh, the effect of the damping ratio on the behavior of the transfer function itself um, so at at a low frequency, high frequency, we are doing a very good job in terms of approximations. Right? You see this is a 20, 40 dB per decade, 10 times the frequency. Right now the horizontal axis is of plotting omega and plotting omega over omega zero. So I normalized the horizontal axis. And in this, uh, we can see when zeta is very small and Remember, when zeta equal to one, that's a critical, critically damped uh, system. And when zeta, zeta is less than one, the system is under damped. And as if the uh, zeta is really small, that means really under damped. And we we have pretty uh, big error in terms of estimating, uh, approximating the uh, the system. And by the way, I'm using the two straight lines, the black line to approximate the game plot. And for the phase plot, and remember in the uh, in the um, first order system, we have 90 degrees phase transition typically, right? In this case, we have 180 degrees phase transition. And again, here um, happened in two decades, as you can see, the black the black line we draw that's the approximation, and uh, process, uh, the approximation is doing pretty good job if the zeta is 1.0. Um, but it, as zeta getting smaller, the um, the transition actually happens in a much uh, narrower uh, frequency range. Uh, so the approximation is not that accurate anymore. The another uh, general form is T sub 2s is if we equal, equal to 1 over Ts. So in this one here, we have, um, if we do the uh, approximation of this one, the game plot, in both the game plot and the face plot, um, we will have uh, just a flip across the horizontal axis, right? Because the game, uh, the game plot uh, is just one over, and we take the log of one over something that becomes negative. And if you see the actual plots here, we do have these. And again here, so the um, the black line is the other straight line approximation. As you can see, the um, the uh, damping ratio having pretty uh, big effect on the the shape of the um, transfer function, the body plus at that and that resonant frequency. In this case, when the omega over omega zero equal to one, which is 10 to the power of zero, and that's where omega equal to omega zero. At low frequency, uh, this is the one, uh, this is the zero dB per decade, a zero dB line, and a high frequency in this case, we have negative 40 dB per decade. 
and the this is the uh, this is the face plot. As you can see, this one over T sub one s represent a low pass filter, right? Okay, I think that's good enough to understand the uh, the general form. And next, we're gonna look at the uh, first order system based on the series connected resistance inductance capacitance. I'll see you in the next video clip.